continue to have some more students join us. Uh, welcome to our professional development series workshop, How to Work, How to Work at Career Fair. Uh, we have some great panelists joining us. Just so you know, we are going to be recording this session so that those who maybe aren't able to come today will be able to check this out and get some great tips from our panelists and from the questions that you all might be asking them. Uh, just a couple of introductions. My name is Maureen Cathy. I am a career coach in our Business Career Services office and um, happy to help all of our students, working also a lot with our graduate students uh, on their career coaching needs. And I am also happy to introduce uh, Dylan. So I'm gonna let uh, Dylan introduce himself. Hi, everybody. My name is Dylan Washenbach. I'm an undergraduate career coach here in the Walker College of Business and Business Career Services. Um, I also wanted to remind you about the career fair. That's why we're all here. Um, so in about a week, um, on October 7th, well, you'll have the opportunity to go over to Holmes Convention Center um, and participate in the in-person career fair. But you can also participate in the virtual career fair that's happening on October 8th. Um, so you can register for that on Handshake and start picking out your times um, with the organizations and employers that you want to meet with. So I would definitely suggest doing that sooner rather than later so you don't miss an opportunity in the future. Great. Thank you. And Dylan and I are going to be asking our panelists some questions. And like I said, we're going to leave some time as well for students to ask questions. If you think of a question as we're going through and want to type that into the chat, uh, both Dylan and I will keep an eye on that, as well as we have Taylor Mack, who is our co-pilot as well for this evening and taking care of keeping an eye on all that for us. And um, if you type that in the chat, we can, we can see if we can maybe interrupt that uh, kind of question stream then and ask something that relates, or we can definitely have time at the end, as I said, to ask those questions. So please keep those coming if you have them. Great, well, I'd like to introduce our wonderful panel that we have here this evening. So we have Mark Crabb from National General Insurance. We have Hannah Razia from Rush Enterprises, Mark Lukwis from Cloudbeds, and Lauren McMahon from Haynes Companies. And I'm gonna let them do a little bit better introduction than I can um, of themselves. So why don't we get started? And um, I will have each of you do a brief introduction of yourself, your company, and maybe what you're hiring for at the career fair. And I'm just going to kind of go how I see you all on my screen. So, Mark, if you want to start us off, Mark Crab, sorry, we have sure. two Marks. Mark Crab from National General. Sure. Hello, everybody. Uh, Mark Crab, National General Insurance in Winston Salem, Vice President of Claims over the Mid Atlantic Division. Uh, I recruit heavily at App State. I love my Mountaineers. I can't wait to get there next week for the career fair. I have missed the fairs incredibly so. Uh, so looking forward. I hope you'll be there. Um, I hire for claim rep trainee positions, and I'll hire between 100 and 105 each year, although this year I'm on pace to hire about 140. Uh, claim rep is the one who investigates auto accidents, taking detailed recorded statements, uh, from the drivers, witnesses, passengers, uh, looking at photos of the damages to the car so, uh, to see how the cars hit, points of impact, looking at Google Maps right down at the accident scene to help guide your questioning. And really, you put all these pieces of the puzzle together to determine what really happened and who was at fault. And if it's our insured at fault, how much do we owe for damage to the other car or rental while it's being repaired, medical bills, pain and suffering, those type of things. So it's a lot of investigation a lot of decision making and a lot of customer service. That's that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, we're we're a, we're a large company. We were uh, uh, over six billion dollar company with nine thousand employees before Allstate bought us back in January. Uh, now we're bigger than uh, than I can really get my mind wrapped around. Over forty five thousand employees, uh, growing faster than we can keep up with, and a lot of opportunities. So uh, it's good to see you guys here. I'm looking forward to some questions and really looking forward to seeing you in person next week. Thanks, Mark. Lauren, do you wanna take it over next? Sure, so um, good evening to everybody. Um, I don't think it's good morning. I think we're all in the same time zone, so good evening. Um, my name is Lauren McMahon. I'm our Director of Human Resources here at Haynes Companies. Haynes Companies is a um, industrial textile supplier and converter. So industrial textiles, think automotive textiles, um, furniture, bedding, construction, uh, packaging, medical, stuff that is durable and 
uh, disposable in, in forms of textiles. So it's not the Hanes brands like the Michael Jordan Fruit of the Loom, but we get that a lot. We are headquartered in Winston-Salem along with Hanes brands, so it's a common misconception. Um, Hanes Companies is owned by Leggett and Platt, who is a um, S&P 500 company who invented the bed spring in the 1800s. So it's really cool because um, that's something that people resonate with because most everybody has a bed. Um, what we're hiring for at the career fair where we'll be next week in person is management trainees. Um, it's an opportunity for you to come on and learn all facets of our business through a trainee program, really dive in, sink your teeth into it. We have a lot of success with the um, App State program, uh, specifically more on the supply chain side, just due to the nature of the job. Um, our management trainee program is very heavily based in procurement, purchasing and vendor relations. That's kind of the most flavor of the job. Um, but we certainly talk to people from all facets. Uh, we have a current marketing manager who's our marketing coordinator from App. We have, I'm thinking off the top of my head, four or five recent graduates. And today we actually offered another Mountaineer job and he'll let us know Friday. So we love App and we're excited to be here and um, fortunate to be a part of the panel. Thank you. We're glad to have you as well and glad we're getting some Mountaineers in those positions. All right, uh, Hannah, would you like to go next and introduce yourself? Sure. So Rush Enterprises is a new partner with App State. I know that we've done some interaction in the past, um, but as of January, I joined the Rush Enterprise team and I noticed that we didn't have as many college relationships as I would like. And um, App State was one that we have plenty of alumni here at Rush that speak very highly of their time at App State. And we obviously value them as managers, salespeople, you know, all kinds of different levels in the organization. So I'm kind of trying to get back out there and, and start recruiting again. Um, and I'll actually be there next week, obviously. So I, I look forward to seeing uh, the views of the mountains because I'm here in Texas. So um, we don't have many mountains here. So um, looking forward to meeting all of you next week, but the main things uh, Rush is looking for is a lot of people think Rush Truck Center and they think, oh, it's a trucking company or it's logistics, but we are the support for those companies. So we sell trucks, we sell parts, we sell service, um, we keep the truck drivers on the road. Uh, we have uh, huge companies that we partner with, like Amazon, Coca-Cola, some of those larger companies um, that we keep them uh, rolling. And then we have small mom and pop local companies that we help at our dealerships. So uh, the main opportunities we would have for students would be for internships for sales and internships for management trainees. Um, so those would be the two major um, focuses we would be talking about. Great, thank you. We'll be excited to have you join us. All right, and last but not least, Mark, would you like to go? I'd love to. Um, so uh, my name is Mark Bloomquist. I'm our Director of Sales Enablement here at CloudBeds, and uh, we're new to Appalachian State. Um, CloudBeds is a software as a service product or SaaS product that focuses on um, the hospitality and lodging industry. So we are operational software that helps them to run their business better, smoother, increase their reservations, uh, create a better guest experience. Um, and we are an all-in-one best-in-class software. Um, I, I'm very much looking to looking forward to getting out on campus. I haven't been to Appalachian State before, but I've, I've heard very good things uh, about how beautiful it is. So I'm looking forward to getting, getting there and uh, getting to meet everybody. Wonderful. It is a beautiful place. So we'll be glad to have you. Well, we're going to jump into some questions now. For our panelists, uh, we will ask a question, either Dylan or I, um, and we will maybe throw it to somebody. But if, if you feel like you will try to let everybody answer if you want, you don't all have to answer every question because we do have, you know, want to get lots of different topics covered. Um, but, but please kind of feel free to chime in if you have something additional to add. Uh, and I think Dylan has our first question. Nice to meet all of you. Thanks for thanks for joining in today. Um, what would you say is the best thing a student can do to really impress you while they're at the career fair? Well, I can get started. I thought maybe you were going to call on somebody, but I'll be glad to get us started. <laughs> uh, you know, first, just show some confidence in, in approaching a table and, and 
typically you would stick your hand out and introduce yourself. I'm not really sure where we're going to be with handshakes next week, and I appreciate the fact that some people may not want to or it may be uh, forbidden. I don't know. But uh, just, just uh, I love to see the initiative to, you know, come up, introduce yourself, uh, tell us what year you are, what you're majoring in, and, and ask what we have to offer or, or what, uh, what our company is about. So, uh, I mean, that, that's the first big step that some students really struggle with. But I can tell you, once you do the first one, you'll get really good at it. So just jump, just jump on the first table you come to to get that out of the way. I, I agree with you, Mark. It, it's kind of like at the school dance, everybody's like, what do I do? Who do I go to? Uh, but the students have to remember that the companies are tied to a section, right? We can't walk around and, and grab people. We rely on you to have that confidence uh, to not only let us introduce you to our companies, but also see the initiative in you, see the eye contact, like Mark said, see the handshake if applicable. Um, and really see those, you know, I call them soft skills, but I think they're hard skills, The um, that inter, those interpersonal skills, if you will. And that's a really good indicator because when that resume is handed off or we are making notes, you know, or, or a memory note, um, those things matter, you know, confidence walking up, great eye contact could hold that elevator pitch conversation. And it's, you know, those things are memorable and that's what we lost with COVID with that in-person interaction. Um, and now that we have it back, I just hope to see students capitalize on it. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, body language matters, right? We're, we're reading the person in front of us. Um, but I, I'd also add, uh, and this might be a personal experience, but um, we're often confused, right, with different businesses. And I know it can be tough to research a lot of businesses in depth, but um, certainly know what the business does, right? Understand who you're talking to and why. Um, you don't need to know every little detail. You don't need to research the product. You can save that for later, um, but you should at least understand what the business does and um, what you're talking about when you approach somebody. I agree um, with everybody, but um, one of the things um, that I was going to touch on before uh, Mr. Bloomquist did was, you know, researching the company, maybe having like your top five or top 10 um, companies that you want to talk to, research those. Um, that way you can at least know that five or 10 of your conversations on Thursday are going to be, you know, impactful and you already have some questions prepared for them. Um, that's what impresses me is that when someone comes up and they actually ask, so, you know, how many sales reps are you looking for? Or how's the parts business right now with supply chain issues? I'm like, oh, wow, they actually know, you know, some of the actual current events that are going on. Um, in our industry. So that's what impresses me. Great. I'm going to do a little follow up there to that since it was brought up about kind of that introduction, that initial contact and the handshake. Um, we are not necessarily um, putting a ban on handshakes, but obviously we are letting people know that, um, that people are going to have different comfort levels with that. So how would you, if someone either doesn't want to shake hands or is a little nervous about that approach, not knowing kind of what, what they should do, what might be an alternative or how do you think they should approach that with the handshake? I, I'll answer real quick first, just because this happens a lot when I'm, because we're actively interviewing, like I'm sure everybody is. You have to understand it's uncomfortable for everybody. Like, don't think you're the only one who's going in like, like, you know, everyone gets it. So I personally would not be put off if I reach out my hand because that's just me naturally. Um, and somebody says, oh, no, I wouldn't. I would be like, OK, that's your choice. So I think everybody has some confusion. Um, and so I think that's the norm. I think confusion is the norm when it comes to the shake. Maybe we yeah. should we should bow. <laughs> Uh, I, I would agree with Lauren. Um, I've seen a couple of different approaches, which I, I thought were good. Um, closed fist versus open hand, right? That's a sign that you either don't want to, or, you know, um, I, I think the fist bump is the new professional handshake. Totally fine by me. Um, I've also seen people put their hands behind their back, right? And cross them there as a way of signifying that they're not interested in handshaking. So uh, again, we're, we're reading your, your body language as well. And so we're um, in tune enough to kind of understand if your hands are behind your back or if you're not reaching out, then we'll, you know, for at least from our standpoint, we'll mirror that. Thank you. I know that's a 
tough one right now to kind of figure out for everyone. But as you said, I think that is the key to remember is that we're all trying to figure that piece out. Um, and it's a little bit awkward for everyone. So that may be as an icebreaker, right? That um, that was might, might be an awkward moment. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into another question then. Um, what is tends to be the first question that you ask a student when you're interacting with them at a career fair? Um, and, and what are some of the ways maybe that you think are good for a student to start a meaningful conversation? You've touched on research a little bit, but maybe what are some other uh, ideas as well of how are you going to approach that student at the beginning and what should a student do to create that meaningful conversation? Anybody want to pop in on that one? Uh, yeah, I can get it started. Uh, typically, I, you know, after the, the initial introduction with names, I'll ask what year they are, what's their major, and where are they from. I'm looking for uh, possible routes near Winston-Salem, uh, and, then, and then from there we talk about, well, have you ever heard of National General? And, and, and Going back to a previous question, if, if, if there are companies on the list, I think Mark was talking about this, if there's companies on the list that you know you want to talk to, absolutely, it, it's a great idea and you should research the company. But if you're there and a, a, a table catches your eye but you've not done any research on the company, please don't let that keep you from talking to us or, or whoever it is. Go ahead and introduce yourself and say, I, I don't know anything about your company, but I'd love to hear, hear something about it. Because you never know what they're going to say or what they have to offer that might spark an interest in you, and you end up uh, with a, a, a job and or a career. I can tell you, when I graduated college, I never thought about being a claim representative and investigating claims. But, um, it, you know, it, it just takes that, that one conversation and a few questions, and you, you're just never sure what path you may be uh, heading down uh, without any plans of it. So please don't don't let that keep you from approaching a table if, you, if you've not done research. Yeah, that's a really good point, Mark. Um, the research is, is nice, but be honest. If you haven't researched this, it's okay. It just okay. helps us to understand how to get that conversation going, uh, whether or not we should tell you about us or whether or not um, we should expect you to ask us some questions. So that's a good ad, Mark. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of keep going. Um, the first question I ask is what brought you over, right? Name, we're a fully remote company. We were remote well before COVID. So where you're located or where you're from doesn't really matter to us. Um, we have salespeople all over the world. We have employees all over the world. Um, we do have three offices, but rarely do people go to them. Um, so that's not something that matters to us as much. Um, but I, I do love to know what brought you over. Sometimes it's, you know, the, the sign or the banner or something looked cool. And so I wanted to find out a little bit more. That's okay. I'll, we're happy to tell you all about us. Um, we do it all day. So, um, but if you have done a little bit of research, then it's a different conversation. So saying, oh, well, I noticed online that you do this, that, or the other, and we can focus on those things. I essentially keep it simple. Um, I try not to overthink the introductions because usually most of the career fairs I go to, it's just, you know, rolling all day. Um, so I, I usually just ask them, hey, you know, what are you looking for? You know, what are your goals post-grad? I try not to dwell too much into like GPA or what their degree is and more so ask what they're interested in because I've hired many a finance person that turns into a marketing person or a marketing person that turns into an office manager or something like that. So I, I know I sound silly saying that to education professionals, but um, I, I don't dwell too much on the on the major actually. So I really just ask them, what are you looking for post-grad? Yeah, that's a great point, Hannah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Please don't let your major uh, limit you to the possibilities for uh, careers. Because I hire all majors, as a lot of employers do. Don't think just because you're majoring in uh, accounting, for example, that you're going to be an accountant. Uh, keep your options open. That's so true, Mark. Um, for me, it's it's a lot of that basic, when do you graduate? Um, because I need to know if I'm talking to you about an internship or a full-time job, right? Like, that matters. We don't... Um, 
sometimes we don't have uh, a ton of full time. So, I mean, it ebbs and flows. So knowing that, because I want this to be worthwhile for you. I don't want to waste your time talking about an opportunity full time. If you're like, oh, I'm a junior, I'm, you know, and it's like, that's fine, but I want to know how to direct my conversation. Um, so, and then where you're from is important because, you know, I'm noodling locations. Um, I'm noodling relocation, you know, where do you want to be? Um, and um, so, yeah, and then that really helps. So kind of having that prepared, which I would think that would be in your, your, your introduction, you know, hey, my name is Taylor Mack. I am a rising senior and I'm a computer information scientist. I can't even know that major, a marketing major. That computer one was too hard for me. Um, I'm a marketing major. Well, then I'm like, oh, awesome. Where are you from? And, you know, that, that helps. And Taylor, I'm sorry to pick on you. Your name was just right there and it was just easy. <laughs> Thanks for those answers. I'm gonna let Dylan ask another one. Yeah. So I touched on in my first question, ways that students can impress you. So on the other side of that, what are some of the major faux pas that you've seen, both in in-person fairs and virtual fairs? Because they're kind of different beasts in different ways. So what are some of those big faux pas that you've experienced um, that students should avoid? I think this segues into an, another question or, or another topic, but um, dress too casually, wrinkled clothes, right? Things like that. Just, be professional, um, whatever you choose. Uh, we're not picky as a company. Um, you know, I, I wear a t-shirt to work most days and shorts, I work from home, it's easy for us, but it's it's ironed, it's, it, it looks professional. And so whatever you choose to wear, whatever your version of business casual is, um, again, just make sure you you look like you're there for work. I would say the same, you know, as far as uh, I know that's a, like you said, that's a topic that we're going to go over as far as what's where. Um, but as far as another thing, it, I had a few um, calls today with mock interviews and they usually went one way or the other. And um, one thing would be is that they dressed really casual. Uh, one was that they were walking around while they were talking to me. If it's a virtual interview, find a nice place to sit down, make sure you don't have, you know, trash or anything in your background, make sure that you can, you know, maybe even do a test call to somebody else on Zoom before you get on the Zoom with uh, the employer. Um, that usually helps, you know, I've, I've, I have brothers and sisters that are in college right now and I've told them the same things because they have virtual interviews going on right now too. So um, yeah, a few people I, I had, they talked to me on their phone while walking around, I think on campus or something. And so it was kind of awkward because I could hear background noise and I know that I'm being heard as well. Um, so avoid that, definitely sit down in a prof professional setting. Another thing, and I, I know I sound like I'm rambling, but another thing would be uh, don't talk bad about your past employer. Um, you know, if you had an internship last summer and it did not go well, you know, you could simply say, hey, um, it didn't go that well. Some of the things I would look for in another internship moving forward would be this, this, and this. Um, and I didn't maybe get that from that internship. Um, but don't go on a rant about, you know, your past boss being horrible or, you know, how much you hated your last job. Um, that just doesn't leave us with a positive impression. Yeah, and just adding on to that, I, uh, I had a boss a long time ago who told me that we learn the most from the bad experiences, from the bad leaders. And so an easy way to spin that in your favor is I learned a lot, right? And you can segue that into a nice conversation about all the things that you learn by watching people make mistakes and it keeps a positive tone to it. It doesn't have to be a negative. Nobody wants a bummer on their staff, right? We, we don't want downers. We don't want people that'll be cultural issues. Um, it's hard to, to figure that out, but if somebody shows up complaining, you're, you're pretty much assured that that's gonna be a, a difficult conversation. Yeah, I would agree with both of them. Um, and one thing that drives me crazy in in-person 
career fairs is when students like travel in packs because they're just there to check the box. And, and it's very evident that they're going to tables or booths that their friends are just at. And it's, it's almost disrespectful of our time, you know, because we're trying to identify the people who really want to be there. Um, and it's a tremendous opportunity. So don't just go, if you're going to check the box, I mean, I guess that's, that's on you, but you know, your path will not ideally be what your best friends is. You can be best friends out of this. You know, a lot of this is growing into your own, have that independence, you know, have this experience. This isn't summer camp. You know, you're not going to get bunk beds together. This is your career. Like you need to be invested. Um, and so go on your own and walk around, you know, have the confidence to do that. And, and it bothers me when I just see packs and I get inundated with three people that are just hanging out and they're all coming because they're just, and I'm like, who am I? Who's really well, the one who brought y'all here? <laughs> especially now, Lauren, right? With COVID and, and we're a remote work environment anyway, but a lot mm -hmm. of other businesses now are remote. And if you can't come talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, how am I supposed to trust you right. to work at home by yourself right. and be disciplined? Right. Right. And so I think that's a new dynamic that we're all figuring out and one that um, is easily identified in those moments where you can't stand on your own and have that conversation um, about your career, to your point. Yeah. Y'all hang out after, you know, go meet and get a beer, go get something. But in that moment, you're there for you. It's your job. Your friends aren't going to pay your mortgage. I can promise you that I've asked. You know? It's yours. So this is your journey. Well, and it's also a good experience to when you do sit down afterwards and you're comparing your conversations yeah. with different companies, make sure they match up, right? It, it's our job to be consistent the same way it's your job to be consistent, right? And the way we speak about things, somebody's conversation may have gone in a different direction than yours, and you may learn something from talking to them afterwards that you didn't. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to have those individual conversations and then go back together with your friend group and talk about your day and um, explore the companies that really got you excited. I know we've talked a lot about the dress code, so to speak, for the career fair, and I think that's actually a standalone question. But uh, I will say after coming to the Walker Business College Fair, uh, Business Connections, uh, for years, uh, the, the dress of the students has never been an issue uh, at App State. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're top notch as far as how you present yourself at a career fair. You're very well prepared. To go along with that, though, I was at a career fair at App State uh, several years ago, uh, and this young lady come through, and she was not dressed like most of the uh, uh, the students were. But the, but she explained why, and it was because she had just gotten off work. And I said, well, I want to talk to you because I love students who balance work and, uh, and going to class. So uh, it, she explained why she was dressed the way she was. I appreciated it, and uh, it, it went very well from there. Well, let me do a quick follow-up then since we're talking about faux pas. We're also talking kind of into that dress category. Um, thank you, Mark, for that. We, we do try and encourage our students, and I think they do really well uh, in the Walker College business of that professional uh, presence and dress. And we do encourage professional business professional for the fair. But, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different um, dress in terms of our recruiters that are coming and of course for different events and maybe for virtual how that looks differently or not so are there any additional things that anyone like to, would like to add in terms of the category of expectations for dress for in-person or virtual and it looks like lauren i just thought of this sorry i sometimes i have to do this so i don't lose the thought it's like i'm holding it um and Hannah can probably resonate with this, is wear comfortable shoes. Like be be mindful, those heels are super cute, but you don't, you're walking in a, in, in, in an in-person and um, you just wanna portray that confidence as what we've all said. And so sometimes, you know, when you're wearing uncomfortable shoes, you don't wanna, you know, so shoes, just be mindful you're walking on a gym floor, not the red carpet. Any other additions or any expectations that are different with virtual versus in person or things that you would like to remind students when it comes to that dress question? Looks like we maybe covered that. Great. Um, and I think yep, everybody does a really good job of that. So I'm going to move into another question. Um, 
how do you like students to share their resume? Um, should they have them with them in person, uh, like a, a paper copy? Or is there another method you would like? And how would you like follow up, um, whether it be at an in-person fair or at a virtual fair? Kind of how, do you, how would you like that connection to stay? I highly encourage uh, the students to have resumes in hand. Uh, I, I love it when I get a resume. I will make notes on it. Uh, even some codes on it as far as uh, how badly I want to talk to that person later or uh, to, to reach out for an interview. And actually, if things go very well in that brief conversation, uh, they'll leave the table with an interview slot for Friday. So me personally, I like when they have uh, their resumes printed out. I, I'm not a bit concerned about taking a piece of paper from somebody, even in our current uh, environment. Yeah, I, I do like getting that resume in person for the reasons that Mark said. I, I also like when, um, and this is going to combine a couple of things. Um, I like when students ask what we're looking for, right? What do we want out of a candidate? What is the right type of employee for our company? Because not every person is a fit for every company and not every company is a fit for every person. And so I also like when they go back and take time to format the resume, highlighting the things that fit with us. It shows initiative, it shows that you put some thought into it. And I'd like to see those changes because I, we're gonna have a lot of resumes at the end of this thing. And I'm gonna use those to Mark's point to kind of put some things at the top, but that doesn't mean I don't wanna remember you and I don't want you to stand out. And so going back and sending me a resume, connecting with me on LinkedIn, sending me a message, reminding me of the conversation, right? These are old school interview techniques for me, but I, I think they're still relevant. Um, but yeah, you know, remind me of what we talked about, something that was unique to our conversation and then say, hey, you know, I made some changes to my resume that highlighted some of the things that we talked about, um, would love to set up a, a next call, right? I, I think doing it both ways just shows initiative. It shows that you care, that you're interested. Um, and I, I really do like that. I personally like paper resumes um, at the career event because I like to take notes while I'm talking to somebody. Um, that way, because oftentimes, like I was at one last week and then I have a, a stack of paper on my desk um, with you know 50 resumes. Out of those 50, who stuck out? Am I gonna remember you know, the four different Tylers that I talked to? Probably not. So I, I like to make notes so that if a Tyler does, you know, send me a resume via email, I can remember, okay, was that the one I clicked with? Or is that the one that wasn't really interested? Um, so please bring your paper resume. And oftentimes I'll even scan it in and, um, you know, make it digital myself. Um, another thing is try to keep your resume um, kind of standard. If you have, you know, a four page resume that has staples in it or, you know, things like that, it, it often kind of gets, um, I guess, convoluted with everything else that we have traveling with us um, and don't laminate it. I've seen a few laminated <laughs> resumes and then I'm like, how do I scan this in? But um, anyway, so I wouldn't recommend laminating it. <laughs> yeah, Hannah, if I'm going I'm to... Uh talk a little bit more about what you, what you talked about as far as a four-page resume. If you're just graduating college, you should not have a four-page resume, and I am confident that uh, people like Maureen have, have you uh, prepared with most likely a one-pager, and trust me, that that's for the most part all I want to see, and uh, I mean in five to ten seconds, I can see about all I need to see before I know what questions I want to ask. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Mark. I think even the president of a company shouldn't have a four page resume. You know, there's you have to condense things. And um, I think that's a trend that will never go out of style. Uh, that because that, to our point, and, and I agree with everybody. It's it's the paper is huge. I'm a big proponent. Um, and, you know, like what Mark was saying about, you know, that double dip, you know, still connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, send me an email. Um, if you, you know, have my information, you know, I try to give my card out to everybody, you know, I'm paid to pit myself out, if you will. So I want to share my information, reach out. That's, you know, my company pays for my phone. It's not mine. And, um, and I like that, like, so reach out to me because I want to remember you like to Hannah's point, you know, who did I talk to? And 
those are the people that show those initiatives that we talk about, the intangibles, who took the initiative, who took the extra time. And um, it doesn't need to be a novel. Just say, hey, it was great to meet you. And that's just a tip, not for this, but just in life, an interview. Um, when you're doing, thanks for meeting. It was great. I really appreciate your time. And because I respect your time, I would think you'd respect mine. And, um, but yeah, paper to answer the question is huge, but also go around and connect on LinkedIn and send an email when appropriate. I'll also add there, um, you all are young in your careers, might not always be the easiest thing to do, but build that LinkedIn network. Mo pretty much every job I've gotten since I was in my mid twenties, I've started with a connection to somebody at that company. Hey, can you introduce me? Hey, can, can I get a phone call with somebody, an audience, whatever that is? And it might not be you. Connect to your parents, your parents' friends, your older brothers and sisters, whoever it is, um, people that have graduated in the last couple of years that you may have known at school. Um, that's a great way to connect and for us to learn about you. If I know somebody that you know, or that somebody that you know, that you know, or whatever it is, right? I'm gonna, I'm, I wanna have that conversation because it's hard, right? Your first job, to, to Mark's point, you shouldn't have a four page resume. And whatever's on the resume probably doesn't mean as much yet, right? You'll build it. It'll mean more later. Um, but if I can talk to somebody that says, hey, good person, good kid, hard worker, shows up, right? Discipline, that matters to me. I want that. I want to have that conversation. And that helps you to stand out. I just like preach. That's all I wanted to say that whole time. Like LinkedIn <laughs> is huge and, and it's so easy. And you guys have the tiger by the tail in this environment. Like go out and market yourself and have a professional picture. Have the, I know this isn't this segment, but do all these things because they do matter. Because those paper resumes that the four of us are taking back quite frequently, I'll look them up on LinkedIn. Like I want to get to know them. And because and I'm not going to look at Instagram personally, Facebook, because what you do in your personal time is you do you boo. I want to see professional you. I want to see what you're going to bring to the table. And that's where you see it. Your connections, what industries, if you're in construction, follow these engineering pages. If you're in accounting, follow PW's, you know, Prince Waterhouse, you know, get connected, get articles, stay relevant, market yourself. That's another good point. Your picture matters on LinkedIn. I'm not going to Instagram. I don't want to know what you did in college. I know what I did in college and I didn't want anybody to see it. I'm so glad there wasn't social media. So find a background, a brick wall, a white wall, put on a suit from the waist up, have somebody take pictures of your head from, all you need is your shoulders and up, right? Plain background, that is your LinkedIn profile. They're headshots is all they're really called. That is it. You don't, don't put up a t-shirt of you or wearing a t-shirt or at some event, any of those things, right? Just find a plain background, professional setting, you're good. I'll put in Again, a plug here. Mark, we have, Mark. Oops, sorry, Mark. I'm just gonna put no, in a I plug. That say, we, have, like, we have photographers at the fair, at the in-person fair that will perfect. be available to take those headshots. So if all you of you should do that, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Manage. I was Absolutely. going to say, Maureen, you, you and your peers, again, uh, Walker Business College, one of the best there is as far as having these students prepared. It is almost without exception that a senior or even a junior Walker Business College, uh, that they always have a LinkedIn page. So, Maureen, is that open to employers, too? Because I know me and some of the guys I'm bringing probably need a new LinkedIn picture. <laughs> some of the own people at our own company, I'm like, you need a better LinkedIn picture. <laughs> I do love you. You can do that, too. I think we're going to be emailing them out or the, the link to it. So why not? <laughs> I did my know who we have to get it to. At, yeah, at a conference. I was at a conference, and they did it. They even had hair and makeup, full disclosure. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And I didn't like it. I wasn't going to use it, but it was awesome. So all of you should do it. Well, we've got, we've got that out there then that you're going to all get your new headshots taken at the fair. So that's another reason to attend. We don't have hair and makeup coming, but <laughs> we do have the retirement. <laughs> so um, great. I think D Dylan has maybe another question. Yep. Um, 
So we've covered a lot today. There's a lot of great advice that you've given students, but what would you say is the best piece of advice that you would give to a student that's gonna help them the most at the career fair? I would probably go back to keep your options open. Again, you, you may think you know what you wanna do, but there are so many jobs out there and careers and companies that you've never thought of, never heard of, uh, keep your options open. You never know what might uh, spark your interest and, and, and lead you to a great career. And to tack onto that, Mark, because I agree, is um, find a company you believe in. Understand how they handle promotions, cross departmental changes, right? Where you don't owe, we, I have sent. 10 to 20 people in the last year to different departments out of our sales team because they were good people, they worked hard, sales wasn't the right fit, and they are thriving now in a new role. Not every company does that. If you're unsure, believe in the company. Find something you're passionate about, go to work for that, something that gets you out of bed every day. But understand if, if you're in a company that doesn't do that, that's okay, work hard, build your resume. Those are good things. But if you can find one that is open to you moving departments and switching around because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 21, 22, 23, whatever it was. Um, I, my first job out of college, I sold copiers, like big $100,000 copiers. I am not passionate about copiers just in case anybody was wondering. Um, I'm not passionate about paper, reproducing things, and all of the above, right? It took me time, and it's going to take you time, too. But find something, if you can, that you're passionate about. Build your skill set, learn, and then be agile. I think um, my advice, if you're looking for one piece of advice, um, like you were saying, Dylan, I think I would kind of piggyback off of uh, Mr. Crab and say, focus on trying to network. And so whether that means at the career fair, whether that means on LinkedIn, um, cause much like Mark, one of my first positions, I thought it was gonna be great. And then once I had been there a month or two, I was like, oh my gosh, like I should have done something different. But I had narrowed in on that one employer for my first internship and I didn't network with enough people. And so I wish, you know, I would have, you know, had more options or interviewed with other companies um, and so even though you think, oh, that's my number one company I want to interview with or go after, talk to as many employers as you can. Um, you may be surprised at some of the opportunities that they have, even if, you know, you don't know what they do or, you know, you think you know what their brand is, you know, let them tell you what opportunities they have. So. Yeah, that's all such good advice. The only other thing I would add is just be okay failing your first time. A lot of people don't get it right their first time. Jobs, marriage, I mean, I could first car, like there's so many things that the first time, it's okay, like it's not over, but you'll gain something. Like Mark was saying, you know, what are you gonna learn from this experience, right, wrong or indifferent? It's gonna be something impactful to your story and you can learn how to adjust to that, how to, you know, use it for good, not evil. So take any opportunity you get, like, like Hannah said, don't just narrow down, don't put your eggs in one basket, distribute your eggs, see what offer you get and be open. It might not be in your top city. It might not be in Charlotte. It, that's okay. Like take it, learn from it because you're going to have more, you know, you're going to find your home. I would hope I'm a big proponent of like staying somewhere for a while. I don't think you should all have 10 jobs for your career that don't ever shoot for that. A lot of people think, oh, you'll have 20 jobs in your, first, you know, in your career. No, you want to try to find your home. And, um, but it's okay that if you get it wrong the first time, just look what you learn from it. So, so don't get discouraged if things don't line up like they have in your head. And, and on that note, Lauren, don't ever not work hard. Yeah. You are going to be unhappy somewhere. It happens. There are limited things that we can talk about when people call for a reference. But if you are not a hard worker, that is something that will come out. So if you're unhappy, look for another home, quit, leave, right? But don't start 
slacking. Don't start showing up late. Don't not work hard because you're unhappy, right? Find a better home, but still show up and give it your all. Thank you all. You are giving some great pieces of advice. You're hearing it directly from people who have been there and who are recruiting. Um, so I hope all of our students have really gained some great knowledge, information, and advice from there. Um, so I want to open up the floor that we have a few minutes left. I want to open up the floor to our students that are on our call. If you are not comfortable or don't want to um, unmute and ask, you can type it into the chat and we will ask it for you. But I would love if you have a question, some topic that we did not address yet. If you just wanted to unmute, you can kind of raise your hand or just go ahead and unmute. We don't have that many people on the call and ask away. first question is always the hardest. I know our panelists did a really good job, but I'm sure there's something that you're still wondering out there. Did I see someone unmute the question? So for like resumes or like just explaining like what we've done in the past, are you more interested in like uh, things that relate to your job or like your company or are you like more interested in a variety of involvements and experiences on a resume? William, great, great question and thank you for asking it. Uh, at at, at the, the point you are in your life, I don't expect you to have any experience uh, uh, with anything insurance related. What I'm looking for is are you willing to work and have you worked while you're in school? Uh, have you contributed to you to your own uh, school? I'm looking for customer service. Well, I don't care if it's uh, you know uh, working at McDonald's or uh, I mean I, I love a waiter and waitress position, uh, telephone experience. Although that's a little uh, I see less of that with people your age, but any any type of interactions uh, with the customers, I love to see that, and the fact that you've simply chosen to work and help contribute. I love that. So yeah, don't don't try to necessarily think you're going to have things that apply to uh, to the employers that you're approaching. Because yeah. most of you yeah. have very little, if any. And I would add, um, put your skills on there, right? What do you want to talk about when we're sitting down having an interview? I learned discipline because I was an athlete. I learned leadership because I was a manager at McDonald's. I learned, right, like the skill set. That's what you have to lean on because Mark's right. Your, your experience is not going to be relevant in our world, um, at least for the most part, right? It, for us, if you have worked in a hotel in the past, I, I wanna see that, right? I don't care what role it was. If you were in the back end of a hotel, then tell me about that because I wanna have that conversation and see what you learned. But for the most part, we're having conversations about your, your personality, your traits, um, mm -hmm. the things that, you know, I'm resilient. Why are you resilient? Well, I tried out for the whatever team four times and I didn't make it, but the fifth time I did. Awesome. That's, I want to, I want to partner with that student. I want to train you and teach you. Um, and so those are the things I look for. Yeah, I agree with them. Um, it, and look at your resume and you're selling yourself, right? We're all in sales. So think about what you can sell the best. Like what is William the most proud of and who is he? Because that's what we want to hear about to Mark's point. Like we know, and but other Mark, you know, we know that you don't have experience and that's okay. Um, you don't have 10 years of work experience that I can talk to you about, but you know you better than anybody. So what can you sell to me? Um, you know, and think about things like to Mark's point, if you went to college three states away, you're from Florida, but you went to app. Well, that's a risk. Talk to me about that. Like, how did you get to that decision? You know, um, you picked this major, but you, you know, you, you changed or you jumped in, so, you know, sell yourself, position this, like, think about, like Mark said, how are you resilient? How are you competitive? Think of those things that you are inherently um, and sell yourself. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I 
would, I would just, uh, sorry, piggyback off of everybody else and um, they've already gone and given you good advice, but um, I'm sure, Maureen, I'm sure that you'll, you guys have pretty good resources to where he could even have you review his resume, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> so yes, you all um, have the resources of Business Career Services at your fingertips. Um, there are a lot of resources that you can access on the Business Careers website. So anytime, you know, th those resources are available to you. They include YouTube videos of our workshops and all the great advice we've had from our panelists on a variety of topics. They include samples of resumes and, and kind of um, information about LinkedIn and how to get that profile looking good. And then ultimately, you can also make an appointment with Dylan or myself uh, to talk about these things or to go over that resume. You can drop a resume to be reviewed or ask us to review your LinkedIn profile. So take advantage of those things. A lot of you have also had Business 2001 as a great starting point for all of that. So take what you learned in that class. And, and kind of build on that. But yes, if you have those questions, we, we always encourage you to don't focus so much on the task that you did in those roles, but on those skill sets that you can really promote that are transferable to whatever field or job and role that you want to get into. Yes, absolutely. Well, it, yeah. and William, I'll add this, uh, wherever you are. I, I love a student that's willing to put their hand up, ask a question, be the first one out of the gates, like, I love that. It's not easy to do. It's a tough room. So, William, you have someone you know that you can go uh, talk to at the fair on, yeah. <laughs> on Thursday. I'll, I'll, I could be the first table you come to and, and get, get comfortable at, for sure. Go connect with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, other questions yeah, that are out guys, there? Please, please, please take advantage of uh, the services that are provided. Uh, through Maureen and, and Dylan and others at the, uh, the, the Walker Business College. Uh, I can tell you from all the colleges and universities that I go to, there is none better than App State as far as these people genuinely caring about you, the student. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on this call. I can tell you hands down, there's none better. So please take full advantage of that. They love helping you guys and they will make a difference. Thank you, Mark. We definitely try, so we want to be here for you all. All right, any kind of last call here for any other questions, something that you want to know before you take those steps, whether you've done a career fair before or not. Um, in person, we've talked a lot about that, but we also have our virtual, which can have its own nuances. Any questions related to that anybody has? Do you think it's absolutely necessary to have an elevator pitch prepared? I, I do. I think it can just don't overthink it. Um, Katie, maybe it's like my name. It's, you know, my name, where I'm from, what year I'm in, um, what I'm studying, you know, just be like, hey, I'm Katie Holder. I'm a rising senior. I'm a marketing major. And I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I read about your company online and I see you're doing this. Cool. Yeah, Check. so huge benefit to the elevator pitch, right? And, and it's not for everybody, but odds are you're going to be nervous, Katie, right? And our, our brains are funny, right? So your heart rate's going to elevate because you're nervous. As your heart rate elevates, your brain's ability to function reduces. Right? They call it your reptilian brain. So if you don't have an elevator pitch prepared, if you haven't written it down and practiced it, you're gonna walk up to somebody and go blank. You're gonna fumble your name, where you're from, and it's going to perpetuate that nervousness. Right? It's gonna become worse and you're gonna have less and less freedom to think. And so to Lauren's point, it doesn't have to be crazy. Just your name, where you're from, what your major is, what year you are, right? Something easy. But we, you know, especially in sales, this happens to us all the time where you get on that cold call and somebody's rude or not paying attention and you get nervous and all of a sudden you're done before you even start. So this is actually a way to help yourself to be more comfortable mm -hmm. and, and do it. It's not necessarily going to be some impactful moment. Right, but it's going to get that conversation started, so you don't hit the panic button. 
and, and Katie and others to put you at ease, most of the people who are representing these companies at the career fair are going to be very approachable. Uh, they've been there, done it many times. Uh, and you know what? If you really do freeze up, Katie, I'll, I'll, I always bring some smelling salts with me, and I'll just crack it and take a whip, and you'll you'll be fine. I have honestly had that mark where, I, yeah, where you're just, I stop, and I'm like, do you need a hug? Like, what? Breathe, <laughs> calm down. Like, you're fine. And then I'm totally okay with. Let's start over because, I, again, <laughs> you have no experience. That's okay. Just be committed to work hard and get there. You'll do fine, Katie. Totally. Come see us. We'll 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 virtually work. We'll hug you. Well, I'm going to encourage everyone um, that is on this call. Yes, you've got four recruiters right here that you know you can uh, approach and you can, how's that elevator pitch go? It can also include the fact that you heard from them at uh, our professional development workshop and that can start that conversation. So I hope you do take advantage of the great folks that are on the call here. Um, maybe reach out on LinkedIn and start that networking as they've mentioned, all great things to do. Um, we are at the end of our time with our panelists. So I wanna thank you all very, very much for spending this hour with us and uh, sharing your knowledge and thoughts with all of our students here, as well as those that will watch this recording. We can't thank you enough for doing that because I know it is much better to hear, hear that advice from you all and students know then that, that we really do mean what we say <laughs> about some of these topics. So um, we thank you very much. We're gonna look forward to seeing you all on a Thursday at, of next week at the fair over in Holmes Convocation Center. So I thank all of our students. If there's anyone on the call on the student side that has maybe some specific questions about you know, the fair itself, something with an employer that you need to ask Dylan or myself, we're gonna hang on for a little bit. We'll let our panelists uh, go um, and, and if they need to, but we'll hang on here a few more minutes if there's something that you'd like to add. But again, thank you for joining us at this professional development series. Be sure to sign up and register for the fair, the virtual fair and all of our future events as well. We got a lot of workshops happening next week. Thank you. Have a good evening next everyone. week.